Users often ask me how to control light conditions, whether to use manual or auto exposure, and how to avoid overexposing or underexposing. Mastering the correct exposure is crucial for drone footage quality. The good news is that it's not that difficult to constantly nail exposure by planning the shots in advance and applying some simple tricks that I will show you in this video. In videography there are three parameters to set for exposure, aperture, ISO and shutter speed. They form the so-called exposure triangle. Most prosumer drones like the Mini 4 Pro and the R3 have a fixed aperture, so in this case there are only two values to take care of. The only model of the current DJI line offering variable aperture is the Mavic 3. Being able to control the aperture gives some extra flexibility, but it is still possible to get good results with a model with fixed aperture. In the camera tab of the settings there are some tools to help exposing. The only one I use is the histogram. It is a graph that represents the luminosity of the pixels in the scene, with the darkest one on the left and the brightest ones to the right. By simply looking at the histogram we learn interesting things about the scene. If the bars are bunched up against the left edge, the image is underexposed. If they touch the right edge, the image is overexposed and this is something to avoid at all costs. If the bar touch both the left and right edge, it is the case of a high dynamic range scene, the most challenging situation. If they are mostly in the middle and there is some space to the left and to the right, it is a low contrast scene, which corresponds to friendly conditions for exposure. With auto exposure it is possible to use the EV value to modify the overall luminosity in the scene. I prefer to set it to a slight negative value between minus 0.3 to minus 1 for two reasons. Most models tend to slightly overexpose. Also, it is in most cases easy to adjust a slight underexposed image while editing, while nothing can be done to correct an overexposed one. This is why when exposing I suggest to leave a gap between the last bar to the right and the right edge of the histogram. When filming it is important to plan the moves in advance to reduce the luminosity within the clip. In daylight it is strongly suggested to keep the sun behind the aircraft. After setting the exposure values, it is better to avoid orbiting or rotating movements towards the direction of the sun, as the dynamic range, which is the difference between the brightest and the darkest areas, will be too strong, and some parts of the clip will be overexposed and others underexposed. I wanted to show the width of this red fjord in Iceland with a sliding rotating movement. I had to wait several hours to have the sun behind me for the whole move. It is very hard to expose footage against the direction of the sun, especially in daylight, with the sun uncovered by clouds. On social media we often see clips like this one, with the sky burned beyond repair while trying to get some light on the element on the ground. The result is, in my opinion, unwatchable. We never see anything like this in movies or in works by professional videographers. I suggest avoiding shooting footage in the direction of the sun in daylight, unless with the sun heavily covered by clouds. These conditions are very challenging, even for professionals, and require the use of flat color profiles and heavy computer post-processing. Another situation that requires planning is when starting a move with a camera facing down toward the ground and then progressively turning the gimbal upward. These moves are often interesting revealing shots, but the difference in luminosity will be very high once the sky enters the frame. It is crucial to always have the sun behind the camera when performing these kind of moves. It is often said that the middle hours of the day is when videographers and photographers sleep. 
The results obtained during a sunny day are always disappointing, as the shadows are very harsh and the difference between the brightest and darkest areas too strong. In other words, there will be too much contrast, as shown by the histogram with the bars touching both edges. Much better results are obtained around sunset and sunrise, the time known as golden hour and blue hour. If we must shoot footage in the central hours of the day, it is preferable to wait for the sun to be hidden behind clouds, that act like a big soft box, reducing the contrast and softening the shadows. These are very favorable conditions, as it is easy to increase the contrast while editing. Beginners generally start by using auto exposure for video. Good results can be obtained in several situations if following the tips I'm giving in this video. But there are two main reasons why it is suggested to start using manual exposure. The first one is to control the individual exposure values, ISO and shutter speed. I'm not going to analyze in depth this aspect here, as otherwise this video will be too long. However, I suggest watching my two videos about uh, exposure setting with the Mini 4 Pro and how to use ND filters. You will find a link in the description of this video. When using auto exposure, in case of changes of light intensity in the scene, the software reacts by adjusting the exposure values. This translates in an abrupt delayed shift of luminosity, which is a clear indication of amateurish footage. When using manual exposure, the values remain constant during the clip. It will be then possible to adjust the change of luminosity in a much smoother way while editing, as we will see later. When editing footage, two types of adjustments are performed most of the time. The first one is adding contrast and saturation. It is used with most clips taken in favorable light condition to spice up footage that look just a bit flat. I'm using Premiere Pro, but the process is very similar with other editors. First of all, we adjust the overall luminosity if needed. Then we push the contrast slider to the right. If the scene needs even more contrast, we can lower the shadows and increase the highlights. Finally, we adjust the white balance and add some saturation if needed. A more dynamic adjustment is required when there is a noticeable difference in luminosity within a clip taken with manual exposure. The use of keyframe is required. A good example is a revealing shot, starting with the camera pointing to the ground and progressively tilting the gimbal upwards. The luminosity increases as the sky enters the frame and the brightest point will be toward the end of the clip. We expose for the brightest part. The first part with the camera facing down will be dark and then the luminosity progressively increases as the gimbal goes up. In the video editor, we scroll to the point where the overall luminosity reaches the maximum value, at the end of the tilt of the gimbal. We tap on the stopwatch icon for exposure to set a keyframe. The value is stored in memory for that point. It is zero as we have made no changes. We move the cursor back to the end of the darkest part of the clip, just before the sky enters the scene. We increase the exposure value for that point as needed. Since we have already created the keyframe for exposure, another one will be automatically added when we modify the value. The value entered is plus 0.5. The beginning of the clip until the first keyframe will have this value, 0.5. 
From the first keyframe to the second one, the exposure adjustment will progressively decrease from plus 0.5 to 0. After the second keyframe, the value will remain at 0 until the end of the clip. In the resulting video, the different luminosity between the ground and the sky will be reduced in a smooth way without abrupt or delayed adjustment. The whole sequence appears to be well exposed. Click on this link to watch my video about camera settings for video with a Mini 4 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.